it, it's funny. It's hard. Like we have such a small community. It'd be nice if everybody got along a little better, but that'll never be the case because everybody's got egos. But I disagree. I disagree. I think if more people have an open mind like you and I do, they'll start coming around. And I think it's, I think people are realizing that you know, we all have those different goals and we're all working towards the betterment of society as a whole you know you train people to get better i train people to get better we focus on individual goals and trying to get people what they want out of their bodies so well, i think you know like one of the things like the military training i think you know is just so far behind like what really should be happening i mean it's awful but you know it's a good example though because it's it's like society like, in a whole, like, everything's going to be way behind, like, where the top people are. You know what I mean? So, it's it takes a long time for things to change. And I just see, man, there's so much there's so much fighting. And, and the strength sports do a good job. Like, strongmen, I think, you know, and powerlifters, I think, that all gets along. You know, grip sport, everybody gets along in Highland Games. But, like, Olympic lifting, man, it's just it's tough because it's in the Olympics. None of the other ones are. So, there's just, like it just seems like constant like infighting so but yeah we'll i do see your point i do see your point so um let's let's talk about a real passionate subject you have um youth and developing our youth um do you have some good topics to share on that one yeah i think this is one of the most misunderstood you know um it's funny like you know i hear parents like smart people too you know like in real life they're smart people when it comes to training their retards but like it's no different like if you start, like i drive my car every single day and i since i was 16 years old it doesn't make me a master mechanic like i'm not gonna start boring out someone's fucking cylinders like you know these people they are like oh well i lift weights i can train people no you can't like just because you you lifted a little bit of weights doesn't mean you can train people no more than me driving my car makes me a master mechanic someone's gonna give me their race car to start tinkering with and it annoys me because with the youth training what has happened over the years is you have a lot of uneducated people who you know don't understand how to train kids or what what they should be doing so either they're scared and the parent says oh i don't want johnny lifting weights because his son is growth and they go oh, okay we're not gonna lift weights when someone comes in my gym, like a, a kid with a parent, I've had this happen. Parent comes in, actually a really good friend of mine came in, and he said, uh, you know, I want my son to start training with you. Son was in sixth grade, and uh, he was watching some of the other kids train. And he goes, but, you know, I, I, you know, I don't really want him doing the squatting and, and stuff because, um, you know, he's too young. And I said, well, do you want him to suck? And he was like, well, no, I want him to be good. And I said, well, then he needs to start squatting and get stronger. And he was like, well, I don't want him squatting. And I was like, look. What I hear is I want my kid to suck. If you want him to suck, take him somewhere else. If he's coming here, he's going to be good, and he's going to squat. And, you know, he ended up not bringing him to me. It, 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 he didn't want to bring his kid because he didn't want his kid lifting weights. Look, we got, if you look at, and it's funny, too, because it's not based on any science. It's not based on, it's based on old, you know, well, 100 years ago, this was sad or that was sad. Well, you know, I tell parents all the time, great, 30 years ago, every science, the American Medical Association's stance on steroids where they do not improve performance. That's a great stance. That was 30 years ago, American Medical Association. So if all those guys are awesomely correct, then they must always be right. So why do we test for steroids in sport and why is it an issue if it doesn't help performance? But so it, it, it kills me because they go, well, I don't want it to stunt their growth. Well. American Medical Association now, American Pediatric Association now, they actually endorse weightlifting for kids as young as seven years old. Now, I think properly supervised and done, they can be even younger. My daughter's two years old. We do, we lift. Now, do we lift max weights? Well, hell no. She's two years old. She doesn't barely understand what I'm saying. But, like, she does, like, little kettlebell deadlifts, and we squat, like, holding on to, like, really light things, and we pick up medicine balls and play some on boxes and do fun games like that yeah. now that stuff it's, it's more like a you know functional movement type of stuff yeah. it's just strengthening the way she moves already yeah. and 
Oh, if I could get 15 year old kids or 12 year old kids come into my gym who moved as well as my two year old daughter, I'd be a very happy person because the movement patterns at that young age, they don't think about what they're doing. They haven't been ruined by sitting around playing video games. They're always on the floor crawling, which I'm a huge, huge fan of with my athletes from middle school to high school to, to professional, we do a ton of crawling. Um, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that we don't do as adults that I think from, you know, strengthening our joint integrity to, you know, body awareness to how to move our body. I think crawling is one of the best things that, that, you know, kids and really adults, it even benefits more because as adults, once you don't have a two year old, you're done pretty much getting on the floor. And, uh, so, I, these parents are like, oh, it's going to stunt growth, but there's actually no study that actually exists that ever shows that weight training uh, stunts growth. There's one study um, that was done in, like, the early 60s or late 50s that was done in, like, Japan, and it was based off of kids that were uh, working in a rock mine and carrying, like, heavy, like, baskets of rocks 12 or 14 hours a day. And those kids didn't get to the same height as the other Japanese kids who weren't doing it. Well, yeah, but guess what? You don't have to take kids in this country that are extremely poor who are malnutrition. They're never going to grow to be as big as kids who aren't malnutritioned and poor. Has, now, obviously, carrying heavy baskets of rocks for 14 hour a day had nothing to do with lifting weights or a properly periodized program or something that's supervised. It, there's not one study that shows that that proper supervision in a program with um, someone who knows what they're doing stunts growth. It doesn't exist. Now, what happens is the guys who lift weights and are really good at it tend to be bigger and shorter because they have better levers. So parents see this and they go, well, that guy, you know, he lifts weights and he's short, so I don't want my kid being short. Well, I mean, I guess I watch the NBA, everybody's 6'9". I guess my son shoots hoops, he'll be 6'9", too. It's just an illogical, it's just illogical. So, you know, um, it, it really, it bugs me, and it's something that, you know, when I started my facility, I kind of, what I do that hasn't changed. But the way I market myself recently has kind of changed because at first I was kind of like, well, I don't want to turn um, all these people off, and if I can get them in the door, maybe I can change their mind. But I've been doing this a while now, and what I realized is, like, Basically, we just put it out there. Like, look, if your kids want to get strong and be better, come here. We'll do it. If you don't want them to do it, then good. Go somewhere else and we'll kick your ass when it comes to competing. Day. So, I mean, we got kids. I got, I mean, I got a sixth grader that he's like 110 pounds. Just this week, like, I mean, the kid, you know, he hang clean, or not hang, it was a full clean, 135 pounds, no problem. He squatted 185 and benched 155. You know, like, and he's in sixth grade. Like, you know, I guarantee you take 50% of the American population of males that can't do all that. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is, like, it. I've been training that kid since he's been in fourth grade. You know, like, he's been with me for two years every week. I mean, um, he's had a progression. Did he start off, you know, benching that much or squatting that much or doing No, he didn't. He's of learning the basic movements and we built him up that's the thing people don't understand is that there's a proper progression with these with these kids and like we have a youth program we start at six years old with those six years older they're they're holding kettlebells they're they're jumping they're running they're learning proper motor patterns that's the kind of things those kids need to do um motor patterns study show from three to nine that's that is when most of the motor patterns are developed from 9 to 13, you'll get some more. After 13, you're pretty much done developing new motor patterns. So now motor patterns are transferable, so that's why, like, a hockey player is always a good golfer because they have great hand-eye coordination and the motor pattern is similar. Um, but at that point, actual new patterns, you, it's almost impossible to gain them. So it's actually imperative for these parents to get these kids in a proper program that's teaching these patterns and building them at a young age. Otherwise, they're going to be behind when, when they get older. Uh, on top of that, the other thing that kills me is, I mean, every, every kid in the world that, that is any kind of kid climbs trees, jumps out of trees, jumps off the swing set. When you do that, you place forces on the joints that can be up to five, six times body weight. I got no 
no sixth grader who's squatting six times body weight. I mean, that's, you know, like if I did, would be on, you know, be like in the world Guinness book or something. But, um, you know, so it's impossible. Like when these kids, you know, they take, uh, they take their, you know, my son, he's seven. He plays tackle football. Um, he trains with me. The thing is, is these kids going to tackle football, they're ramming their bodies full speed into each other, but yet the parents aren't letting them train to prepare their bodies for it, but they're okay with the kids running full speed into each other. The torques on the joints running into each other are far greater than anything they'll ever see in a weight room, but yet don't let your... Especially under good supervision, too. Especially under good supervision. And, and, and the thing is, I mean, no kid's squatting five times body weight. That's just not even possible, but... The shearing forces on a spine when two kids collide are far greater than the shearing forces ever going to be in a proper squat or a deadlift. And so now we're beating our kids up without preparing their bodies. To me, that's the dumb thing. To me, that's the stupidest thing in the world. But yet these parents, they want to just cling to their old traditions and just be like, well, Johnny can't lift till he's in eighth grade. Great. Now I get him after he's all fucked up because he's injured because you let him play in these competitive sports year round without doing anything to condition his body. You know, and I ask these parents, I just say, look, would you strap pads on and go play football today? Oh, I'm out of shape. I need to train before I do that. Well, don't you think you should have the same consideration for your kid who's been sitting around playing Xbox all year, but you want to strap some pads on him and throw him on the field? And that's a great point because I don't think kids are getting the motor patterns anymore because all they do is sit there and play on their damn video games. They don't have the experience that like you or I did when, you know, mom saw me playing a video game and it was like, hey man, 30 minutes and you're outside or I'm kicking your butt or you're gonna go pull weeds for the rest of the afternoon. It's like, whoa, okay, I'm done, later. <laughs> I think general play has definitely diminished. And also, uh, if you look at physical education in elementary, middle school, high school, I mean, um, you know, I, I trained an elementary physical education teacher, and she's just like, every year they cut us lower and lower. She's like, I think she said now at this point in her district, they get 20 minutes uh, every other week with the kids. And and that's all the physical education they get. I'm like, do we have physical education every single day? Like, that was the best part of the day. And now it's been so diminished, it, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, like. Think back to when you were in, you know, high school. What do you remember about high school? I don't know about you, but I remember playing football, snowboarding, and chasing girls around in track. That's all I remember out of high school other than, you know, some of my cool teachers. But, I mean, I didn't remember sitting in class. So, I mean, like, sports were an integral part of, you know, your youthful activities. And, yeah, it's just ridiculous how they're – you know, they're cutting fundamental things down that is reducing our population to nothing. The thing is, is like obesity, you look at it, I mean, that health care from obesity, I mean, it's one of our largest academics is obesity. I mean, we aren't spending millions of dollars a year because kids are walking around and they can't read, you know, fucking Tolstoy or something. You know, like, it's it's the obesity, but yet we're, we're cutting the fundamental things that get kids into physical education or just movement and, like, enjoying just moving and so we cut these things out and we basically i guess not demonize them is the right word but but we really i mean a lot of parents they demonize training and things like that oh you'll stunt your growth you do this you'll do that you know and, and it's funny because that's one of our biggest problems yet we do everything to make it worse and then we wonder why our population's so fat and out of shape and why our health care costs are so outrageous you know and, um, you know, it, it hopefully, I mean, you know, I try to educate my parents, you know, but it, it's hard because you're fighting a, a really an uphill battle because it's just that conventional wisdom, which is awful. Um, and you know, you get it from parents all the time and, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but I mean, basically in our facility, you know, I've, I've kind of gone the way of like, look, like. Our kids are champions. They train hard. They lift up. They pick up heavy shit. You know what? They do it properly. They learn how to do it before they get to super heavy weights. And they, because they do that, we don't have injuries. I mean, we have, right now, we have two clubs we work with. Um, and in the fall, we had another one. So basically, um, this winter, we'll have had 300 volleyball athletes on through the program. Uh, two of them have gone through, uh, will go, have gone through 
like one one's on a six month program, one's on a five month program, one's on a four month program, and basically through all that time, like we haven't had any injuries in our weight. Now we've had little things during our conditioning stuff or agility drills, like someone rolls an ankle here or there. But in our weight room, we don't have. Now I don't consider those like real injuries. I mean, you know what I mean. Someone's, you know, someone. It's got, just the nature of our sport. I mean, like you, you're bound to determine to pull something or tweak something every once in a while. I always say we can reduce, we can lower the chance of injury, but injuries are gonna happen. If you have 300 kids training over that much time. I mean, not at once, but you have that volume and that number and that training hours. You're going to have some sprained ankles here and there from running. Um, but in the weight room, we haven't had injuries. Why? Because we educate our kids. I don't look at all of our kids as just kids who are lifting. I always tell my guys, turn your, co your athletes into coaches. And I tell our kids, teaching is learning twice. So they're not just squatting. They're coaching the kids squatting. They're, they know how they, we teach them how to spot the squats and like we we punish hard even on our warm-up sets if people aren't spotting properly then it's 50 burpee time you know they only they only do you only do about 100 burpees before you you learn the importance of spotting and so you know we instill upon them how important it is because not only will if you don't spot properly, will you get injured as a lifter? You could you could hurt the spotters as well if they're not paying attention. So, um, you know, the the kid training thing it that just kills me. Um, you know, we have a, t a big youth program and we got a lot of kids, young kids that do really impressive things, and you know, but a lot of the parents don't want their kids, in it, and it just kills me because we get them when they're ready to train when they're 15 years old and they've got all these injuries because all they've done is play competitive sport and never train their bodies to get to be able to to prepare for it so i a lot of kids and you know either you know a lot of high school kids come to me as freshmen that are so messed up you're like what are you 40 you know you're so messed up because you've been playing this competitive sport but you never did anything to to prepare your body for that activity so hopefully you know hopefully that'll change um, but again, it, it's such a slow process. I, I think that's another one that's going to be a long process. Yeah. Well, I mean, but the, but you know, by getting the word out there and you know communicating with everybody else, we can kind of facilitate you know getting you know parents on board and showing them that you know there really is a good way to train and progress and you know get kids to train better. <laughs>